starting to look a little bit like Christmas here in my house. So that means in the studio, it's time to do a little bit of Christmas stock. I've got a shot set up here. It's a very simple shot. It is of a Santa hat. We're gonna cut it out and put it on a transparent background. Let's get started. Pretty simple setup today. I've already got everything set up. I've already tested the lights. I've got the exposure right. But let me show you how I've got this set up to begin with. I've got one softbox overhead lighting the top of the hat. I've got this um, light over here, which is slightly behind coming forward, making a nice little highlight on this side right here. And then I've got a scrim. Let's see here. And then I've got a scrim on this side with my AD100 just bare head going through the scrim, acting as kind of the main light for this side. And then I've got a whiteboard in the background. I'm going to cut this whole thing out because Adobe Stock, about a couple of months ago, two, three months ago, Adobe Stock sent me an email saying that they are taking PNG files, which the advantage to sending in a PNG file is that your image can be on a transparent background, which I think makes it a whole lot more attractive to a buyer if they need to cut it out and it's already cut out for them. So I'm gonna shoot this hat, we're gonna put it on a transparent background and send it into Adobe Stock and see how it does. Okay, so here's my view from the camera. There's the three lights that are involved. I am at ISO 160 F11. Okay, so there's the initial shot on white. Now, my plan is to cut that off the background and send it into the stock agencies as a transparent background. So in order to get that white fringe of the hat and the ball at the end to separate, I'm gonna take a series of additional shots with a black card behind them. I'm not gonna use that shot as my final image. This one that I just showed you will be the final image but the black cards I will use to get a good selection in order to cut this one off the white background because white on white is gonna be very hard to separate. We'll use these additional shots just as a means to get a good selection. Although that little trick works to put the black card up there so that I can use those images to make my selection, it, it's a great idea and it works really, really well. In this case, my hat actually was able to move, so I had to be very careful not to move anything because I want each shot to be the same so that they'll line up together. And I think I've got that. So we're gonna do the Photoshop work here. It shouldn't take too, too long because I think the shot looks really good on its own. There's not gonna be a lot of changing as far as the initial shot. We just gotta make that clean selection, get it on a transparent background, and we'll be done.
All right, so just a quick little explanation to explain what you just saw. Um, first of all, I just used the magic wand, the selection tool to grab the red, jump that to its own layer with a layer mask, and then what I did was I blended the four layers that had the black card behind the white areas of the hat. I blended those into one layer, so I just selected those white areas that uh, had black behind in each one. Went to the channels. I think I picked the green channel, made a copy of that channel, and then I just adjusted the contrast so that the blacks in that channel went black. The whites went completely white. I helped that out a little bit with some burning and dodging and a little bit of brushwork. And what I was trying to accomplish in the channels was to create something that was simply just black and white, no grays. That way when I clicked on that channel, it would select just the whites. Then I went back into the layer that was the original uh, final layer where I had selected the red, which was fairly easy to do off the, red, the white background, by the way. I went to that particular layer, and on that layer mask, just cut out the white part. Now, because I was cutting it out on the photograph or the layer that was the white on the white, my edges ended up being nice and clean. Even if they were a little tiny bit off, if I'd have done it on a layer with the black paper behind it, you would have seen it, and it would have looked, you know, it would have looked poor. But because it was white on white, it looked really nice, and I had very little cleanup to do afterwards. So using the channels to get the selection is just a pretty simple way, and, it, and my experience over the years is it works really, really well. So there might have been an easier way to do it. That's the way I've been doing it for years, and I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an explanation how I did that. So flattened the whole thing, left a transparent layer, saved it as a PNG, and now I will upload it to at least Adobe Stock. We'll see how many uh, other agencies will take it like that. Uh, I really haven't played with PNGs too much on most of the sites, but if you got questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, fun little project, short video. I'm assuming it will be a rather short video, but it was a fun project in the studio today. Helps me get into the spirit of Christmas, if nothing else. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching. I will see you very soon. I got a lot going on right now. I got another Christmas composite thing that I'm working on. And uh, I'm excited for these videos that are coming up. But uh, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Leave comments. Give me a thumbs up if you would. If you haven't subscribed, you might want to think about that. And if you do, I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video.